We are indeed. I'm just waiting for that. Waiting for that to start so I can hit that button. All right, let's get going. Hello everybody, welcome to our first game of the Grand Championship Series 2 qualification round, Citadel. We have here on a great map, one of the best 1v1 maps in the community currently, Crossroads. From the south side, playing as the Soviets, it is going to be Jezlin. And from the north side, hailing from the United States, playing as the Wehrmacht, remember the name, it's Sears. This guy's been practicing and he's ready to scalp a big seed player and he's playing from the north today. This is going to be an interesting match because uh, if you remember from Grand Championship Series 1, uh, Jeselin has actually quit the game after that tournament because the performance in it got knocked out quite heavily against Aimstrong. Uh, it was so good to see him come back this year and come back with a very positive attitude as well. He's put a lot of effort into uh, play styles and you know, l learning a, a lot of the new meta in the game, but he has built his own play style again. Um, and I think he's a really, really interesting player. He is one of those great thinkers in Company of Heroes. He is indeed. And uh, an interesting thing about GCS1 performance, he did that as a favor to me. I was a little bit scared that um, we weren't going to have some of the big name players playing the tournament. And he, he came back, he didn't practice, and he didn't enjoy it. So he's had a taste of what it's like to um, fail on a tournament, something he wasn't used to doing. Um, so this year he's trained a lot harder. Well, he's trained very hard indeed. And uh, He's playing uh, against Ciaz today, and uh, Dan, do you know much about Ciaz as a player? Um, not recently, if I'm honest. Um, I feel like Ciaz is kind of recently back to the scene. I, I haven't seen so much of him, especially not in tournaments. I think that's a, the interesting point, is a tournament play. No, don't know too much of Ciaz, but uh, I do know from you know both the past company here as one, things like that. He's a very, very good player, and I know that he's uh, been a strategist for a long time. Yeah, that's right. So um, he's, he's been a big figure in the community. He's one of the like, founding members of the Remember the Name clan with, you know, Khan and Momo for show and all those guys. Um, like Lyconius, to name a few, mostly an NA clan, really. And he's just always been a big proponent of helping in the community and being a vocal member. Big attack here by Jesling with the Penal Battalions. Sears is going to have to get out of dodge. Yeah, that was uh, really unfortunate, actually. He tried to reposition the MG42 to uh, suppress the penal battalions. He had no support, uh, just because that was one of the first units that came out on the field for him. And uh, instantly, that unit's pushed away. Great opportunity for Jeselin now to push up the left-hand side. He's also fighting off a grenadier push uh, on the right for decapped territory, and Jeselin's going to return it with engineers himself. It's an interesting start to the game. Very aggressive. It is. It's very aggressive. Nice push away by CS from his cutoff on the right. We've got a pitched engagement on the left. It's classic Co2 gameplay. Penal Battalions versus a 3 grand MG build, and it's all going off in multiple avenues of engagement. It is, yeah. It's, uh, <clears throat> Justin's going to be the first to recap his territory on the south, get those resources coming in. And uh, if he can just get the uh, the Grenadiers out this position, I really like that Ciaz put the Grenadiers in there because he stalled an engagement and basically held two units off from pushing the central point again. That's allowed the MG42 to get a great position of suppression and uh, forces the engineers away. And this is a this is classic. Uh, this is classic Crossroads. We remember how Crossroads uh, used to be played, where you'd always get uh, Axis kind of holed up on the left hand side of the map, and uh, that's exactly what seems to be happening here. It is a very classic game of Company of Heroes. It is so far, and Crossroads is, as Dan says, an excellent map to exhibit this kind of play. It's probably the best map we've got. Um, an interesting tidbit about Sears for all of you. He is coming to GCS2. He has his plane ticket booked, along with his lovely wife, and they're already coming. They're already big benefactors of the tournament. So Sears is playing for the love of competition today. He wants to win. He wants to prove himself in this tournament. Not for the money. No, he's got money. He's got a good job. He wants to win and compete and beat Jezulin today because that's exactly all he wants and all he needs to do. And we've got uh, Tier 2 coming up in the base now from Siez. He's going to maybe go into some light vehicles to uh, help push away the hordes of penal battalions that uh, Jezulin's called out. Jezulin's already gone for guard, rifle, combined arms tactics as well. So we could see uh, KV1. I think this commander is fantastic, eh? Um, 
you know, it is. PPSHs, guards, Sturmovikail 2, KV-1. Cool. Look, better commanders do you get for Soviets at the moment? All it needs is uh, radio intercept. <laughs> <laughs> you could keep adding, you could keep adding. Interestingly, CS has a decent loadout, Blitzkrieg Doctrine, in Jaeger Infantry Doctrine, and Mobile Defense. So we're hoping one of the first two, just to keep things a bit fresher in GCS. Uh, interestingly, his bulletins are a little bit uh, quirky. He's gone for Brotherly Love, increased rate of fire for the MG42. Knife Through Butter, that's pack 44% increased reload speed and Faust 7% increased range. I have to say Dan, as bulletins go, usually they're quite meh, but his are quite good in this game. I really like it. I think he's got something to really just play a solid game there. You always want the Fausts to be long, I think, because you know you have to time that already and you leave yourself a little extra time if you miss the Faust as soon as a unit is close range. I love that. Uh, you know, extra fire rate on an MG. Who wouldn't want to suppress these penal battalions quicker? And uh, 80 gun reload, I mean, especially with some of the 80 gun abilities. I, I really like that bulletin loadout. Tell you what, talking about loadouts, uh, the Flammenwerfers are going to be loading out for the 251 half track in roughly 10 seconds time because this thing is 70% complete it's waiting for this penal battalion and it's gonna spring fiery jets of fury yeah unfortunately he did just get spotted you can see shots from another penal battalion so Jeselin won't get caught off guard and I think Siez was maybe hoping that he would get a kind of uh, flame pop that's not gonna work and the half track is gonna go to the center of the map try and clear out this garrison in the center Jeselin knows better, and I haven't seen any mines from Jeselin yet, actually. Let's just a quick look, see if Jeselin has played any mines. No, nothing. So this is uh, half-track. Relatively safe, apart from the guard squad. Exactly. Just the guards the have just side. been called in, and uh, the three CPs to get something on a lot of PPSHs. The 251 is going to have to be careful now. The elite troops of the Soviet army are here. This is an interesting one. Have you seen Jeselin's also gone for the PTRS? Um, on the penal battalions, which is, uh, I mean, he's got the guards. Why maybe take the infantry power away from the penal battalions? But I guess maybe he wants that snare. I can explain this, and uh, it's very easy. It's two syllables. It's five foot six of qualified um, elite level play. It's DevM. Everybody's copying DevM's Soviet builds. Um, Everything Sans the, the Sniper is currently out for Jezulin. It's the two combat engineers, it's the um, double penal battalions, and the, uh, sorry, the triple penal battalions and the single guards infantry. It's all about getting one PTRS penal and keeping the guards, and you can just protect everything against the mobile defense. And of course, CS has gone mobile defense. So this is the build DevM built to counter Mobidef. Hmm. I mean, it makes sense. It does make sense to kind of split that up early on is used uh, and utilized the great infantry firepower at the start of the game. I'm really liking some of the strategies that are, are coming out to beat mobile defense and we spoke about this last week when we saw the kind of raw power that that commander brings uh, into the mid game and so players have been looking for that answer but I think one thing that may really really help Jeslin is just the fact he's capping the map so much better. Look at this, he's divided yep. all those resources again. I think he's actually playing uh, a better game strategically than Ciez maybe at the moment. Possibly. He possibly is. I mean, he's he has got great micro. Ciez, um, I know they're both rusty, but Ciez is obviously not a former tournament winner like Jezulin is. Jezulin was once the most dominant player in Company of Heroes history. In 2014, nice by the 2-5, sorry, nice by the uh, penal battalions there. Pop smoke. Yeah, possibly could have got a final shot if he'd have tried to push for sight around the back of the smoke. <clears throat> not 100% hey. sure. The unfortunate thing about PTRS, of course, is you don't get an attack ground ability. It's all you have to have line of sight. So smoke is extra valuable in those situations. And I think when he slipped behind the smoke, he may have been able to to trigger that though. I think he did have the range. Maybe if it was a tank hunter conscripts and he could oorah, that would have helped. But uh, no. alas, that's never a commander we're ever going to see. You're surprised that that's not the counter to mobile defense, really, when you, <laughs> when you think about how these things you know, are. You never know. I mean, they did get a slight buff um, a couple of patches ago, so it's not unheard of. The enemy is yeah. attempting to steal our things for people to uh, figure out. We've just got tier 3 coming up for Jeslin in base. Maybe going to see a, a T70 would make a lot of sense with the AT that's on the field at the moment. It would be a huge problem for Ciaz. And uh, Ciaz, I don't think he's prepared himself very well for this at the moment. He could probably just about afford an AT gun. 
I agree. There's no uh, mines down. Uh, possibly a teller down. He does have 58 munitions, but the Pack 40 is the obvious next choice for me. And he'll be aware of the T-70's imminence. I mean, have you probably you're a little bit surprised it's not on the field quite yet. And there's a lot. Oh god, PTRS is 251. Needs to get out of there. That smoke really has. He has saved that unit. So yeah, he's doing a very sensible thing here, actually going right hand side whilst everything's on the left and connecting the fuels. He's going to need that if he's going to roll mobile defense as soon as he gets the CPs available. And he is about to come out on Puma, so maybe he isn't going to go for any AT gun at all. He's just banking on this call in which is now available. There you go. And it's I think the 10 minutes prevalent in. Puma. It can penetrate the T-70 perfectly and... Uh, to be honest, I think Ciez has played that quite well. I know people in chat, um, whether it be it on Twitch, YouTube, wherever you may be watching this, you're probably a little bit sick of seeing the Puma, but you've got to admit Ciez's timing in this particular game, just, he just looked on the back foot, it's pretty damn good. It is, but Jezelyn's got it covered. I love the position of the engineers here. They're actually providing recon, and now Jezelyn's going to know that Puma's coming, and he's got plenty of time to reverse back to base, and I think that is really good play. It's also dangerous for CS to push any further, because he hasn't been able to minesweep that side of the map yet. So, That's a great um, point. Yeah, it's a good I like play the by point Jezelyn. about the reconnaissance. I think coming here is, is vastly becoming how well you can protect your units be with reconnaissance with anti-tank i mean to play a sniper well you have to protect it you have to have a line of infantry in front of it and uh, we just saw a t70 played well you had combat engineers scouting for the threat nice shot through the bushes there there's a lot of uh, a lot of ground attacking going on puma trying to get counter shots on the t70 and uh, ptrs's have just been pushed back with the penal battalions could be a nice Opportunity for the half track to go in, but it is being repaired currently. It's a nice early game. Let's have a look at the overview. I mean, both players have pretty much uh, killed and capped equal amounts right now. So no big stories of manpower gains and things like that. It's just a very good game so far. Credit to Ciez's training. He's been training a lot, playing a lot of uh, 1v1 auto match on stream. But in his stream title, he has rocked. Please PM me for a scrim. He's rocked that for the past month. He's been scrimming a lot. He's been training a lot. And he's looking damn good in this early game. It looks like we might have a game that has legs and has the longevity to give us good game material. I agree. And uh, even the VPs, dead even. Great use of the Flamer half-track there. Ground attacking. Just trying to get any damage they can to the health of those guards. It's uh, double guards from Jezlin. It's going to be difficult to keep mobile defense up. I mean, looking at it now, it's an even game, but Sears, if he does kind of commit to this, I think he's oh. going to find it difficult as the game goes forward because he's also lacking anti-infantry power. He is. He is indeed. We had a nice mine in the east there, pushing away the Grenadiers. The T-70 looked to clear up. I think the 251's been the hero of the show so far. He's gotten 12 kills, veteran C2, so plus 20% rotation speed and plus 20% acceleration and deacceleration. He's very nippy now and able to be more nimble and deal with threats, go to, uh, left and right around the battlefield and evade a lot more quickly. However, it has now been buttoned. Oh, this Smoke could be a great moment for the T70 to pop around. It springs into action. There's penal battalions coming up alongside it. Didn't manage to make use of that uh, of the button ability. Nice, though, by uh, CS to evade well there, but the 251's in danger. Here comes the Gauze Rifles. I don't know if they'll get Smoke that last is shot off. Really. No, couldn't quite get it off. Just seen that also, AT gun come on the field. Um, which is interesting. I, I like that he's gone for the AT gun and hasn't lent in for a second Puma, because the one worry that I've got at the moment is that he didn't, or hasn't, teched up the Battle Phase 2, which nearly to me suggests he might stick with mobile defense all the way through, and I think that would be a big mistake against this build. So hopefully he does tech and, and go into something else, so that he'll need well, it. Well, I think you can play uh, mobile defense solidly if you have pack play, if you have good pack play, and you maybe have something like Panzer Grenadiers with Panzer Shrex, because the Two Pumas and the Panzer IV Command Tank with a pack can deal with anything the Soviets have to throw at it. Um, you get the target weak point, you get the overarching uh, lines of sight from the pack 40s, and you're pretty much golden. But I would agree that I think Tier 3 has more uh, more to offer. Mm. I mean, uh, 
it's one of these things. I've actually seen a couple of players trying to utilize the Ospin. I actually think we saw that in the last qualification round was an Ospin as a as a counter to some of this. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I think the, the situations where that came out were kind of already one-sided games. Um, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see you know, if, if that unit particularly has any kind of effect. It would make sense that it would, but I just don't think the Ospin carries that punch anymore. So LMG's on the Grenadiers. <laughs> uh, LMG's on the Grenadiers. Now it's a veteran C2, these babies, getting a 40% accuracy buff. And uh, that's really going to punish the conscripts and the penals behind green cover like they are. You know, they're not being fully mitigated right now, and it's allowing CS to get back into the middle of the map and to start to assert his dominance once more. That said, Grenadier, low on health. Will these penals get the kill? Absolutely. Yes, they will. <laughs> Headshot. Absolutely, we're going to get that kill, and Ciaz should have spotted that, really. There was a garrisoned penal battalion that he definitely should have noticed. He might lose another squad on the retreat as well. It's negative cover. Flame Half Track comes in to try and stop that kill and is successful. And Ciaz, this is such classic crossroads. Axis hold up on that left-hand side. He's waiting, just trying to get any resources in, stall the game as long as possible, and uh, try and get those bigger units out that are going to help. And, and justin has got a big job right now of just continually attacking resources and spreading forces in a relatively closed area to try and draw attack lines. Uh, it's a really interesting game. I read it slightly differently. I, I definitely think now with that Vet 3 Gren loss, I think CS is hurting. I think mm. he's holed up and he's hurting. And, and, uh, and if this fuel is continually harassed, he's not actually going to be able to keep getting the stuff out he wants. You know, at the moment he's only got 70 fuel. Jessilin has 238 fuel. That is a strategic dominance. And with this... Oh, nice. Puma's going in for the kill. Yeah, his Puma should get this. He stops the uh, Puma just to get that extra accuracy and is rewarded for it as well as the T-70 goes down. A beautiful play, and he needs that kind of thing right now. He really needs that. So it's a, a big opportunity for him to get some anti-infantry capability and start pushing the map back. The beauty of the PTRS build, of course, is that it's not fuel reliant. It's all about uh, munitions and manpower. And uh, that has allowed Jezulin to stack fuel. He's now building the mechanized armor Compania. And of course, he does have access to the Clement Virashilov tank. And he'll be able to really steamroll the center very shortly. Still kind of watching Siez with his. Uh, he has teched up to battle phase two. So it looks like he may go that direction. But as you pointed out, resources are just not favoring that approach at all. Um, and I think he needs to work harder to try and cut Jeslin. He's about to walk over a mine here. This will be... Oh. I think this is his first... No, it's not his first encounter of mines. Um, but I think he'll he'll know that there's quite a few on the right-hand side. His engineers have been tied up preparing for so long. Hasn't yep. been able to, to sweep there. So it's really... It's dangerous. And That's one of the issues with Wehrmacht's play. And uh, that's why CS right now is building a second Pioneer. Vermacht have such an issue with re repair speed and being locked down repairing their vehicles. They also have four-man squads, meaning they're constantly getting triggered by mines and having to re you know, re retreat to base because they're only four men. Um, it's a very tricky prospect, and uh, that's why he's had to rebuild the second pioneer. Just get a quick drink, BRB. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, A's point is absolutely correct, because without that second pioneer, he's not going to be able to repair and push the map. And that's really one of the most important things he needs to be doing right now. Jezelin making use of the time to plant mines on any uh, any likely points that units are going to be walking past. And it's really, really smart play to keep putting that pressure on Oster and keep making the game very, very difficult to play. Uh, MG does go down there. Great move by the Penal Battalion, catching that MG off guard. A little bit overextended by Sears, who continues to push out on the right-hand side with very little units. And uh, we're not going to see Rifle Grenade here. I think Ciaz is just trying to conserve the munitions he has, maybe. Potentially fearing that at some point soon he could be seeing T-34s or a KV-1 out on the field. He needs to make sure he has munitions to snare. <coughs> but uh, actually looking like a pretty decent defense from Ciaz. I mean, let's, let's not forget that he does have control of the left-hand side of the map. He hasn't really lost that to Jeslin for a lot of the game. So resource-wise, he's fine. You know, he's only history. been one VP, one VP, you know, down to Jeslin. 
Yeah, it's not he's, been he's that bad. Time. He's now been able to uh, protect the MG with the two LMGs. He's also rebuilt that third ground here, now claiming a second kill. So I think CS is stabilized. I mean, as always, if you have a squad wipe, there's going to be a few minutes where you're, uh, you're down on your luck and you're down on your control. But CS has regained that control. Uh, but that said, Dan, I mean, there's something that's just popped up on my player card for Jessulin on that uh, that fifth square. And that is, of course, the uh, IL-2, which is that thing that, you know, you think you've got control of the map. Here's some <laughs> hell planes, armored hell planes from the sky above that are going to stop you having that said control. I'm hoping he's going to save it for his first vehicle spawn, if I'm honest. I mean, I feel like he's maybe not utilizing a window of effectiveness here. He's actually going for the SU-85. I, I guess I kind of get this. Maybe he wants to go in with the infantry, dominate, snare, like put long range pressure. I would have thought maybe uh, actually a T-34, 85 would have been better to just continually keep CS reinforcing infantry and spending manpower on that kind of thing. But I yeah. uh, can definitely see the benefit of this. What, what do you think of the SU-85 here? That's a damn good call. 251, very, very tricky situation there. Had the main gun crit, and it's just escaped with about 3 HP. That's, that's had a lucky show, and it's now got Veteran C3, which is, of course, it's 20% uh, we weapon cooldown, 30% sight range. So it's a da verifiable beast on the battlefield. He needs to keep it alive. That's probably one of the few oh, here we go. that's holding off. Yep, I've... Uh... I've seen it. It's immediately infantry retreating. They know exactly what's coming, and they're in negative cover. And, uh, I think he's lucky, actually, not to lose more models than that. Well, the IL-2 did have a large damage reduction in the last patch, so it is a lot less fearsome, but it still does a damn fine job of pushing units off. It suppresses them and damages them just enough to make them be retreated. SU-85, Dan, is going to dominate the central battlefield now. Yeah, and you can just see the sight range of the SU-85 when it's in its focus fire mode. Look at the range on that. Puma's got to be really, really careful. He doesn't even need the engineers to scout. Uh, and I think that's actually massively beneficial that he's not wasting any unit scouting. He's literally just going to be able to play that unit, leave it in the center, let it auto-target things. And, uh, yeah, indeed. And it's all about attaining veterancy in SU-85. You want to, it's all about nursing it and ensuring it stays alive. Grandy is difficult retreat path there. I mean, CS is holed up on the east side of his base. Two five ones coming to help out, but they're going to be up against PTRS, so they won't be able to help out for too long. Oh, flame damage is incredible against the peanut butter. If he can keep that unit alive, I mean, I think he's definitely in with a chance. Panzer IV has just arrived on the field, and uh, let's forget like a good flank on the SU-85 that will go down if he can support it. Get the AT gun working. Smoke has had to be popped again by the 251. Keeping it alive, but an amazing attack ground by Jezulin. 251 hits the dirt. Nice shot. Was that the, uh, the SU 85 there? It was indeed. And a, a great shot through the smoke. 251 down. Veteran C3 lost. Well, even though that's gone down, I have to say that that unit's had an amazing game. So no yeah. uh, no shame in losing that 22, well, 23 minutes in. Now it's the Panzer IV that it's going to have to. Really, really hold up a lot of territory. We've got uh, potential three VPs that could be taken by Jezlin here if he pushes with the guards. And uh, Siez, I think, yeah, it looks like he's baiting Jezlin onto the left, baiting engagements there, and he's going to quick cap the right hand side. This is this is good. I like this. Mm, it's nice. Yeah, he's got the pack. He's got the Panzer IV uh, on the west side, and he's able to now cap the central and the east. Uh, big shout out to 251, it had 23 pyromaniac kills, flame damage orientated kills, and Dan is right, it had more than its uh, fair share of damage on the battlefield, but, you know, it's no longer alive. Pioneer could be going it. down here. Oh, This could be an interesting moment, if the SU-85 decides to go back into this engagement, there's an AT gun there and a Puma which could flank. We could see big things, Ciez is going to spring into action. Yes, he's, he's going to go with for the Panzer it. Too. It's a... Uh, Reversing as fast as it can in its mobile orientation of sight, and it's backed itself up against a wall there, the edge of the map. It should be fine. Elsewhere, look at Jezlin on the right, by the way. He's got the retreat path covered. He's got the penal battalions, and they're in a great position to catch the grenadiers coming across the negative cover. Could have thrown a, a satchel then if he was feeling cheeky, if he'd started it straight away. This is what is. happens when you overextend oh. Vet3 down. This is big problem for Ciez. And he's got to retreat other units as well. Jeslin's going to start moving those penal battalions across. 
This is the sad thing as well. If you're a player like CS, you can play your absolute hardest. You can compete at your optimum, optimum rather. But uh, a player like Jezulin will overcome you eventually. And that's a little bit of what we're seeing now. A few overextensions, a few uh, pesky squad wipes for CS. And uh, the Spanish destroyer is starting to look formidable. Look at the sight range of the SU-85 just picking the Puma out. Now we've got a KV-1 on the field that's going to be able to tank damage uh, if oh, that gets tanks flanked. The name. It's the archetypal tank. It's the original heavy tank of World War II. 45 tons of fat armor. Clement Virashilov makes his entrance. It's so nice to see the KV-1 back in... Uh, back in 1v1. You do feel like Soviets have a little bit more of that variety uh, that we saw years ago back on the field. And that's uh, uh, currently just the Austria that seems to be solely reliant on Pumas and Panzer IVs right now. Seemingly. This, this uh, MG's been left in combat for way too long. It's been taken out and the KV-1 could go rampant here. Decides against it and just decides to protect the investment of taking out that MG. And uh, CS on the west side is showing a little bit of battle fatigue. I wouldn't be surprised if Jeslin decides to start attacking the base from the right because it's a sensible idea if you want to keep your opponent occupied. Uh, and it would, I mean, he's got the, the manpower advantage on the field at the moment. It would open up some opportunities for him to attack the left-hand side as well. This AT gun just cannot cope with the SU-85 and its sight range. And, oh, this is a great call. Hey, uh, sorry, IS-2 is just coming. IL-2. Yep, Sturmovic is on the battlefield now. Raining fire from, uh, or death from the skies above. And it's just insult to injury, to be honest, uh, to use the skill plane. Now he's already winning, but Je Jezulin is a fierce competitor and uh, doing everything within his right and within his power to seal this game and to end it so he can be fresh for the rest of today's action, should he um, succeed in beating Ciez overall, of course, because, you know, let's see uh, how Ciez does as allies, because... Dan, I can't see many ways for the USA player playing as a Wehrmacht to come back into this game. No, it's tough. With the AT gun gone, uh, I think that's that's quite a big thing, really, because it's something that's going to be penetrating that KV-1 a lot. And also, uh, I'm not sure whether it's veterancy one or not, but I feel like they need that target weak point to stun and flank. Uh, but he hasn't been able to get that position on once this game in order to do that. So now the Panzer IVs are actually pretty useless. All armor on the field is kind of null and void. And there just isn't the infantry to carry this game anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if Sears kind of felt like throwing in the towel at this point. He's a lot to contend with. He's a battler though. He's, he's you know, he's, he comes from a long tradition of battling till the end. I believe Sears is one of those players that will try and eke out a comeback if he can. Or importantly, Dan, try and get victory points because the, the, the victory points you win with count towards the deciding ace game. So he wants to try and lower Jezlin's victory point score. Currently standing at 4 5 2. Um, maybe that's why he's staying in this one. Yeah, was, he's got enough VPs to, to play around for a bit. He's going to go for the AT gun. I think that's an indicator that he is taking this seriously. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've got, like, look at the field at the moment. Pop cap, 84 for Jeslin, 65 for Sears. And then you oh. look at the veterancy as well, and you just think, my god, Jeslin has a much better uh, army on the field right now, and he's commanded a lot more of the game already. So when we're really looking at players, how is Sears going to come back when he's lost a, a couple of... Look at this accuracy. Are these the penal battalions that are veterancy three? So you've got 30% accuracy buff, um, which just really just, just shows every single shot has... Uh, you know, 30% more chance of hitting, and it's really is starting to count on retreat paths at the moment. Panzer Fours. Got an MG42, AT gun, and Grenadiers. Gonna push the left hand side, and that's the VP that he wants. We see Jeslin here laying down more mines in uh, all manner of places, actually. He's got the, literally a line of mines on the right hand oh. side to stop Ciez. Mines going off on the left VP as well. And it's all this kind of play that's going to be eating away at Sears' manpower and, and putting so much extra pressure on to make him surrender. I believe the, uh... It is a line, but uh, it is a minefield now. I think more than two, it becomes a minefield. Well, we'll go with that. Uh, we've got two Panzer IVs on the west side. Sears certainly is building up for something here. He's, he's stocking 
He's packing it out and he's gonna rush in and try and do something brave, I feel. I mean, I hope that's the case. I really do. Oh, he's got the support of the IL-2 there. The MG-42 is under a little oh. bit of pressure. That's a big... big push it is big. He's this gonna is go moment. in. But he, he's going in once his opponent has air superiority. This isn't the best idea possibly for CS. He's got some great penetrations on the Clement for a Shilov though. It's able to reverse away. And he loses a Panzer IV for his troubles, and he's had to throw in the towel. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate play there. Good game. And uh, round one goes to Jeslin. Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to the lobby. What a great first game and uh, very unfortunate of Sears at the end there tried I, I thought he should have gone for that KV-1 with the Panzer IV You know, maybe made yeah, something he, of that but he had no no choice I guess uh, and I think it was just his, his squad preservation that let him down He had three grenadier wipes that uh, were the difference makers between the two players and it's 